We'll, we'll kick this off here. Actually, what this is, is for is uh, election.org. And uh, I'm asking everybody, go check out election.org. That's one of our pages uh, that we are going to start populating with all types of, uh, of information. You know, we would like for election.org to become a one-stop shop for if you want to know when early voting starts, if you want to know when early voting ends, uh, if you want to see boundaries, you know, in terms of the lines, uh, that's what we are trying to make election.org into, uh, a website that anybody across this country can go to to get information about elections, how to uh, register to vote, how to ask for uh, absentee ballots, things of that nature. And, and, that, and that's important. Uh, I will tell you that what we are seeing today is something that our great-grandchildren will be reading about in school. We are seeing our democracy being hijacked. And that's what's taking place, ladies and gentlemen. You know, the things that we are seeing right now for this next upcoming election, where we, we know that in the recent primary in places like Louisville, Kentucky, where they literally closed all of the polling stations in, of course, areas of color and basically made everybody have to converge onto one polling station, where at 6 o'clock in the afternoon, they were basically going to shut the doors and call it quits, and they had thousands of people banging on the doors, saying no, 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 and they had to go to the court system to get permission to keep the polling station open for another three hours so these people could cast their votes. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. Gerrymandering. Is, is a big deal, and it takes place. And those are just some of the tactics, closing the voting stations, uh, gerrymandering, you know, where, where the, the, elect, uh, the, the politician gets to pick his voters versus the voters picking the politician. And that's taking place, ladies and gentlemen. And we're seeing this, and it's happening right now. And, and, and now we have a president of the United States talking about postponing elections, which he doesn't have that right, ladies and gentlemen. That right there should tell you that we have a president that does not know the Constitution. Congress. Congress is who decides when the elections take place. But, you know, we know that suppressing the vote is what they're going to try to do. And the reason for that is because they know that if they cannot suppress the vote, they're going to lose. You know, we have been voting by mail in the military for decades. If we can do it in the military, then why can't we do it in America? Especially when we are finding ourselves in the midst of a global pandemic. Even if it's just this time, even if it's just now, Let's, let's, let's go ahead and allow something so that we don't have people going out and exposing themselves uh, when we are trying to do everything in our power to allow this virus to die out because that's important and that's needed. So I have some notes here. I want to thank uh, April uh, Edwards. She's always a person that helps me whenever I'm trying to get information. Uh, she always goes to work for me and helps me dig up information. You know, today you know, was, was the, 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 the service for, for, for John Lewis. And, you know, if you took the time to listen, and you can go on YouTube and you can listen to President Barack Obama's words, which were absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, I listened to President George Bush's words. And, you know, I tell you that I know that he has caught a lot of flack over the years but I, I will tell you that I'm very proud to have served uh, uh, under, under, under George Bush. Uh, you know, do I have issues with Iraq and Afghanistan? Yes, I do. But I tell you, I know that he is a good man. Uh, and, 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 you know, his words were, were absolutely amazing. You know, John Lewis had three presidents attend his service and speak. 
And what an honor. What an honor. But, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't push forward with John Lewis's vision, then all the work that he has done is for nothing. We cannot stop now. You know, we cannot allow this man's vision to go dark. We can't. We can't. So I got some notes here, and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of hit these. Uh, but very important. Please listen. And, and once again, you know, share this. Share this video. Uh, but I want everyone to also go to election.org and check it out. Mark it so that it can be uh, something that you look at. You can go on Facebook and type in election.org, which, which we write election, D-O-T-O-R-G, and you can save that on your Facebook so you can also go to that page anytime you want. The right to vote is the foundation of any democracy. Other rights, even the most basic, are illusory, which is based on illusion, if the right to vote is undermined. Not everyone has always had the right to vote, and the right to vote is given, isn't given to some. Voting rights are always on the ballot because the representatives you choose are also the ones who will make sure they stay in power via voter suppression. Now, think about that. What did we see in the primary? We saw in Louisville, Kentucky, where they basically closed down all the polling stations. Now, let me see. Who's running in Kentucky that probably knows that if he can't suppress the vote, his ass is probably going to be out of a job. Oh, Mitch McConnell. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. Think about that. Why is all of a sudden Kentucky becoming a place where voting is a serious issue and, 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 and suppression is going on? Because I think Mitch McConnell knows that the average person in Kentucky probably thinks that he is a total worm. Fact. And, you know, I will tell you that when this is over with, when this regime that's in power in Washington, D.C. is finally gone, I believe that we are going to have to rewrite the rules of a standing president and the rules of a, the, per, the people in charge of the Senate and the House so that they are not too powerful to completely halt, to halt anything that is basically to help this nation. Because that's exactly what we have. When you have a man that calls himself and is happy to call himself the Grim Reaper, we have a problem, ladies and gentlemen. There's not supposed to be anyone holding that much power. So, let's talk a little bit about John Lewis. He was, a, he was one of the first freedom writers. Uh, ahead of the Student Nonviolent Coordination Committee. You know, uh, his head was busted, but they stayed nonviolent. He was the youngest speaker at the march on D.C. with Martin Luther King Jr. He was a leader of the march from Selma to Montgomery at the age of 25. As American citizens, each one of us has a God-given power to vote. Democracy isn't easy, but must be nurtured and worked at because it's hard. As long as we have breath in our bodies, we must continue fighting for the right to vote. If we want our children to grow up in a democracy, not just participating in elections, but a true representative of inclusion democracy, we must do something now. Don't be afraid to be silent. Don't be afraid. Do not be silent. I'm reading this stuff. Everybody needs to come out and vote. Guys, let me tell you something. When election gets here, first and foremost, do not wait until election day. You need to reach out to your county clerks and you need to ask, even if you know where your polling station is, you need to contact beforehand and make sure there's nothing in the terms of, of you waking up and going down there and finding that it's closed and now you have to find out where you're supposed to cast your vote. Don't wait until the last day to, to find out exactly where you have to go 
in order to cast your vote. Because especially in places, if you are living in an area that is an area of color, you better make sure that you're contacting your county clerk and you're finding exactly where your polling station is and you make sure that you are going to show up down there and you're going to have your name on a list of, of, of registered voters that's going to allow you to cast your vote. And I know that might sound kind of crazy, but ladies and gentlemen, we're seeing it. Look at what they're doing right now with the United States Postal Service. They're literally going to dismantle to dismantle a function that occupies, that, that, that has over 500,000 employees. They are willing to crash. They're willing to crash that capability and, and hurt over a half a million jobs just to hold on to their power. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why this is so dangerous. It's dangerous. And it's important that everybody absolutely make sure that you do everything in your power to make sure that you can. If you can, if you can vote by mail, make sure that beforehand you make the phone calls, you get everything taken care of. Remember that it takes two weeks. Give yourselves two weeks. If you're going to vote by mail, you better make sure it's not November the 3rd that you're requesting that ballot. You need to be requesting that ballot around October the 20th is when you need to make sure that you have it in hand and you mark it and you send it off. Because we don't want anything, anything to be late. You want to make sure that your voice is heard. But remember, once again, you know, uh, it's important that you beforehand get every single question that you can think of answered. Because once again, remember, this is your vote. You have a right in this country to be able to select your leadership and there are people out there that will do everything in their power to deny you that capability because they want to hold on to their power. Fact. Do not be afraid. Do not be silent. Everybody needs to come out and vote. We have to translate our causes into laws and institutional practices. We must fight even harder for the most powerful tool that we have, which is to vote. The Voting Rights Act is a crowning achievement of our democracy. John Lewis and many others have spilled their blood for this cause, and presidents on both parties have supported it for decades. Currently, we witness our federal government sending agents to assault peaceful protesters, demonstrators with batons and tear gas. Let me tell you, what we are seeing right now, once again, our great-grandchildren are going to be reading about this. You know, I think right now we still, you know, need to, to, to get questions answered concerning these things that we see right now when we're watching TV or if you're living in some of these major cities where Donald Trump is sending agents to cities that are ran by Democratic governors and Democratic mayors and people are being snatched off the streets. You know, if I think one of the downsides to World War II being so long ago is that many of the people that participated in World War II have passed on. And I wonder that if we were facing what we are facing today 40 years ago, how those people would be reacting who actually who actually left this nation and went and fought fought to the death for our democracy against an evil leader that did exactly what we are seeing today on our streets i wonder i wonder how so many of those world war 2 veterans if they were here today what they would be thinking and how, what they would be speaking of. There are those in power who are discouraging voting by closing polling locations and targeting students, minorities with restrictive ID laws that attack voting rights. You know, when you think about anybody who is trying to make it hard, any, anybody in the United States of America that does anything 
that makes voting a pain in the ass, there's a reason for that. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, that is specifically, that is exactly what we call suppressing the vote. As with all of our civil rights, once they are weakened, we must fight harder to restore them. If we allow these people to do what they want to do, and they crash our electoral, if they clash, crash the way we vote, make no mistake about it, it is going to be harder for us to ever get back to where everybody in this country will have the right to vote. As with all of our, uh, oh, I'm sorry, when the Supreme Court weakened the voting, the voting Rights Act, some state legislators unleashed laws designed specifically to make voting harder. Once again, once they saw an opportunity to jump in and put things in play that make it harder for people to vote, especially people of color, they did just that. Especially when there is a population growth or minority turnout. We see this. I don't think anybody can sit here and say that they have, they have, they have witnessed an election take place where we haven't heard, especially a presidential election, where we haven't heard about places that are of places of color that, that, that there were not issues. I, think, I don't think I've ever known of an election that has went, especially a presidential election, where we haven't heard about voting uh, rights being stepped on. I, it, it is what it is, and, and, you, and everybody knows I'm telling the truth here. We should treat this as an attack on our democratic freedoms. Honor John Lewis by revitalizing the, revitalizing the law he was willing to die for. We must push what John did for voting even further by, and here we go, allowing felons who have served their time to vote. You know, that right there should be something that the moment that a person gets out of jail, it should be done. You know, it, I mean, that it should be part of when they let you out of the jail or the prison. You sign on a piece of paper that they take and send straight to your local county clerk's office that says he has done his time or she has done her time and now they have the ability to vote again. That absolutely should be done. And it, how, how hard would that be? How hard would that be when they're walking out to sign on a piece of paper that says, I did my time, and now this paper gets sent to the county clerk's office, and now they have the right to vote again? By having more polling places. We shouldn't allow polling stations to be closed. What needs to happen is more polling stations need to be opened so people absolutely have it easier to be able to vote. That's a fact, ladies and gentlemen. That's an absolute fact. You know, elderly people vote, but some elderly people have a hard time getting up and going out there to vote. We have to do everything in our power to make sure people like them always get that right. Expanding early voting. You know, let me tell you, I couldn't tell you how many times, and everybody here knows, where you've run into somebody that says, well, you know, it was, it was election day and I was working and I just couldn't get off. You know, ex extend early voting. You should be able to early vote. Let's make it a month, a month out so you can go cast your vote. What's wrong with that? Make election day a holiday. So there's no excuse. No excuse. It's a holiday. Today or tomorrow, tomorrow, you're going to be off work. Everybody's off work. So nobody has an excuse not to get up, put your shoes on, go down and vote. You know, and if you don't, then, you know, as far as, you know, you're, you're wrong because that day was given to you to make sure that you cast your vote. Allowing American citizens who live in D.C. and Puerto Rico to be part of America. You know, it's time for the 51st and 52nd states to go ahead and get on board here. And, and, and you know, I bet you that if Puerto Rico was a state, we would have fixed it. Donald Trump would have fixed it by now. But because it's not a state, they don't give a shit. And that's unacceptable. Because I'll tell you this, Puerto Rico has absolutely sent many men and women to the front lines to defend this nation. Fact. Fact. One of my gunners by the name of Santiago de la Torre from Puerto Rico went to Texas and, 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 and took an English class before they allowed him to go to basic training. 
And I sent him home before we crossed the border into Iraq because his grandfather had a heart attack. He then come and joined me in Iraq, and we went out on many missions together. But I sent him home before we redeployed on a green to gold scholarship. And he ended up going to college and getting a commission to second lieutenant. Guess what? He's getting ready to pin major in the United States Army right now. I couldn't be any prouder. We need to end partisan gerrymandering so we can choose our politicians instead of our politicians choosing their voters. Now, I live in Logan County, West Virginia. Let me tell you what gerrymandering did. I live in Logan County, West Virginia, but because somebody did not do well in the area in which I lived, they carved that out. So my member of the House of Delegates in West Virginia is in Williamson, West Virginia. That's, that's 35 minutes down the road. It's, it's in another county. It's not even in Logan County. The people in the northern part of Chapmanville, West Virginia, in Logan County, their representatives are from Lincoln County. That's what happens when you allow people in politics to come in and start drawing the lines to make sure that, well, I'm, I'm known in this area, but I'm not known in this area. It's not right. And that's the kind of stuff that happens. And gerrymandering is what absolutely has been done in West Virginia all over, and it's unacceptable. Finally, know that without voter suppression, too many choose not to exercise our right because they believe their vote won't matter. And that's not true, ladies and gentlemen. We have elections right here in the state of West Virginia that have been won by one vote. One vote. Ask uh, uh, Gary McAllister. He won his, his uh, House seat by one vote. So it's important. Voting is important. Voting is a big deal. And it's our right to be able to select our leaders at the local, at the state, and on the national level. It's a big deal. And nobody should ever allow that opportunity to be taken from them. Especially when you've done nothing to have it taken from you. And that's what we have to do, ladies and gentlemen. So that's what I wanted to do on here. I'm asking everybody to go to election.org. I want you to like that page on your Facebook so it's always there. We want to turn that page into a one-stop shop for anybody out there who is trying to get any information. And if you all go to that page and you see some things that you would like to, to see on that page, go ahead and just send a message because we are listening. So that's what I wanted to do tonight. Please remember uh, to absolutely... Uh, Make sure that you set things up so that when it's time to vote, you're going to vote. Don't allow yourself to be, uh, you know, educated on the day of election that your polling station is not in operation. Because, ladies and gentlemen, that is a problem. Contact your county clerk's office. That's their job to be able to answer your questions as to where you're going to vote, when you're going to vote, when is early voting. You know, let's start talking and say we want extended early voting. You know, instead of instead of 10 days before or a week, two weeks before, make it a month before. doesn't matter. The key is everybody gets the opportunity to go vote, cast your vote, select your leaders. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Election.org, check it out. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.